Hey everybody, welcome to the Suburban Stitcher podcast. My name is Diane. This is episode 100. Um, I had all these grand plans of making this big and exciting and maybe in a different place and and it's really just here, <laughs> which is kind of, you know, how it goes. You have grand plans and and sometimes things are just here and where they are. So thank you. I just, I can't believe 100 episodes. It's pretty exciting. Um, you are, I'm coming to you and I feel like I have glassy eyes and it's not because I'm all like teary about 100 episodes. I am watching the Gilmore Girls, if you would believe it, for the first time ever. Um, I've made my way through, I don't know, four seasons now. I think I'm in season five. Um, and... <laughs> I'm sure that this is not a spoiler alert because I think when you're like over 10 years past when it aired, you're sort of past the realm of spoilers. But Lorelai and Luke broken up and I was all like teary that they were together and now they're broken up right now. And I don't know if they get back together, no clue. But I just watched it and I'm really sad. <laughs> and then I looked at the clock and realized that I have to tape <laughs> before my kids get home. So you get the like, no, you can't break up. Don't break up. You're not done. You're not out. You're all in still. <sighs> anyway. Welcome to the show. If this is your first time, <laughs> bless you. If you are returning, thank you so much for returning and for coming back. Um, I am just thrilled to be able to spend time with you um, each and every week or week and a half or two weeks, however long it is. And um, I'm so grateful that y'all like to spend time with me as well. Um... <clears throat> I have some finished objects to share with, oh wait, announcements, hello, the Around Your Neck Cal ends in two days, it's August 29th, it ends on the 31st, so you, two and a half days, by the time this is up, two days, um, so get those projects finished, get your pictures entered in the thread on Ravelry, and I get to award prizes very soon at the next episode. And I actually might do a special, like, prize-only episode because we have so many prizes. There will probably be at least 40 to 50 winners of something, right? So you need to make sure that you are, even if you think there's no way I can possibly win something, enter it. Because you might. Um... Okay, so that's really it for announcements. Finished objects. Um, I finished, sorry, I always forget to turn off my sound. Um, I finished my Rose City Rollers that I was working on for my mom and they are gorgeous and so soft. Um, I just love them. They're perfect. <laughs> They're just really, really great. I um, just love them. The yarn is Hedgehog Fibers in the Winter Thaw colorway. I think this, um, I got this at the Loopy U, and I want to say that this was on their original sock base. They've changed it in the last year or two, but this is several years old. So probably three or four year old stash actually. And I just love it. It's perfectly variegated and awesome. So these will be, I haven't mailed them yet because I wanted to show them off to you and I need to take their official picture, but they are blocked and happy and ready to go to mom. So mom, I'm sure you're going to watch this. They will be on their way to you soon. And the next finished object, the other finished object that I have, um, is also very exciting. Um, I have been on a kind of a whip finishing thing lately. I am working from home full time now, which we'll talk about a little bit. I don't, cause I don't think I've officially talked about this yet on the podcast, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
Um, but I'm working from home full time. And um, so I have more knitting time, but not if that makes any sense, um, uh, just different kinds of knitting time. And I'm feeling like I just really want to have whips taken care of and either decide I'm not going to finish it or finish it. Um, and the other day I was just, I was in this mood where I wanted to cast on everything new, which I knew I would be miserable with in like two days because I would have all these new projects that would weigh me down. And I was also in this, like, I want all new yarn. And I just was sick of everything. And which is ridiculous if you have seen my stash. <laughs> There's no, it's impossible to get sick of everything. So I just wanted something new and shiny, basically is what it boils down to. So I pulled out two bins of yarn that have been packed away since April or May when we thought we were moving. And I just waded through them, basically. <laughs> Was pulling out beautiful things and just petting all the yarn that I knew I had, but I hadn't seen in a while and falling in love with new things. And in one of those bins was this hat that I had started and not finished. <laughs> oh my gosh, that pom pom is so huge when you look at it like this. Um, but this hat is called B.A. Cool. I am almost positive that it's B.A., like Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires. <laughs> I don't know how to say it appropriately, I'm sure. But B.A. Cool, it is a hat by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I started it probably in January or February, and I did one row, like the cast on and one row, and I was doing it magic loop because I was too cheap and lazy to get size 10 or 11 16 inch circulars because I didn't have them and I needed them for this project and then I realized that I am not going to knit this on magic loop it was miserable so I put it aside and I had purchased the 16 inch circulars but never switched it over and never continued it because it got hot and who wants to knit a bulky weight hat when it's hot and so I just never did anything with it. Well, I found it, remembered how much I loved the yarn, and just thought, you know, it's a bulky weight project. I can finish this super fast. So I did. Um, so I finished it this weekend. Um, it is, I love this ribbing. It's a very different ribbing, um, which was just kind of fun. And it's got a little textured arrow stitch. I don't know how well it's going to come across because my yarn is so variegated. But it's sort of a chevron that kind of, you can see it kind of goes boom, boom, like there's columns of them, well, maybe. Um, the yarn that I used is Madeline Tosh Home, I believe, Home Bulky in the Court and Sparks colorway. And this is a pom-pom that I bought off of Amazon. The, the pom-pom was probably almost as much as not quite, but it was kind of ridiculously expensive for these big fuzzy pom-poms, I think. So, here it is. <laughs> and I love it. And it is so huge and slouchy and squishy and awesome. Um, it's going to be the perfect just warm hat. I love that it's neutral because it will kind of go with everything. I love the pom-pom. I love everything about it. So that is done. And um, this pattern is part of the authentic collection that was put out, I think, in December by Hohi. And um, this is the first thing that I've completed from the book. But I have also cast on Spectrum, which I'm working on, or on and off. <laughs> it's technically a whip. Um, but I've been working on that, and then I also will be casting on Citadel, probably this weekend, um, which is a sweater, big sweater coat from that book. So um, that is it for finished objects. That's kind of funny, because I'm definitely... There's obviously a variegated, multicolored neutral theme to my, at least my finished objects. And then once 
once we get to work some progress, you will see that the variegated neutral, or at least the neutral part, totally goes away. And I've got to put my hair up because it is 8,000 degrees outside. And I have a huge amount of hair, as you can see. And it just needs to be off my neck. Okay, so, yeah, that's a hot mess. Oh well. Maybe I'll cut this out. Maybe not. Who knows? If you're just joining me, I have either just put up my hair and you watch me do it, or I didn't and I cut it out. I don't know. But either way, my hair's up now. Same day. <laughs> it's different hair because <laughs> it's hot. Um, okay, so works in progress. I have been talking about this shawl for months. I have been pulling yarn and dreaming about yarn for so long. And I finally just on Friday decided, you know what, Diane? you need to cast this on. So I did. And the project that I'm talking about is, God, I don't have a picture of it. I'll link it. Didn't bring the pattern over here. But the shawl is called Brioche Explosion. And it is by Stephen West. It is a enormous DK weight brioche shawl. Um, that one side is kind of all speckled yarn and the other side is scraps that are more solid, but, you know, or it could be whatever you want it to be. Um, so this is it so far. It looks so good on the camera. Um, I already need bigger needles. I, I guess I need to get a bigger cord. I don't know what size cord this is. I thought it was a 40 inch. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Anyway. Um... So here it is. It's easier to hold it like this. I love it. Um, I have no idea. So you start here. No idea if this seam is right or wrong. It's staying. I'm not. Whatever. No one's going to notice or care um, in the scheme of everything. But it's so great. I just love this. Okay, so my main color right now, um, which is this side, this um, kind of lightish speckly, is spun right round. This is what it looks like in the cake. This is DK weight yarn, spun right round. And the colorway is called Crybaby, or Squish DK, 100% Merino. And, oh my gosh, just so great, right? The back alternate contrasting colors is kind of where you use leftovers or or full skeins that you just do whatever, however you want to do it. I'm using DK scraps. So, so far, these are actually DK slash worsted because this is Yowza. This one is Yowza by Miss Babs in the sugar colorway. I knit a, um, one of my... Yowza Way It Shawls out of this. Actually, both of my Yowza Way It Shawls I've knit out of these two. Um, so this is the sugar colorway, and this is Yowza um, in Deep Sea Jellyfish. Yes, yes, Yowza in Deep Sea Jellyfish. And then I'm on my third color, it's just starting, which is still attached. This is what I have. So it's just going to be a little bitty, little bitty row. And this is Love Note from unwind yarn company so that is the back side and really it's interchangeable it's reversible you can wear it any way you want but I will probably wear it where it shows I think I don't know I mean it's just gonna show on both sides both sides are awesome it's a brioche explosion <laughs> it's so fun um, I am horribly behind on podcasts, um, particularly ones that are, um, that I don't watch on YouTube. Um, so basically anything audio and then a couple of, um, 
a couple of podcasts that I watch via um, iTunes, um, I'm horribly behind on. And I was just catching up with the fat squirrel this morning, and she was talking about um, the Excuse Me poncho that she's knitting, which is a brioche poncho, which I want to brioche everything right now. Um, and she was talking about how she loves brioche because it's very rhythmic, and I totally agree. It is slow. It is very slow because you are literally knitting each row twice to be able to get the thing because you kind of knit the front half of the stitches, but all of them, and then you knit the back side stitches, and then you do the revert first on the way back. And it's so like to get a back and forth row, you're actually knitting it four times anyway. But it's so rhythmic once you get it going. And I just have to agree. And I don't know, Amy Beth, if you watch my podcast, I'm sure not. But um, I just agree with your thoughts on brioche. It is so rhythmic and so beautiful and wonderful. Um, and it's funny because I have been just wanting to cast on all of the Halloween yarn and all of the fall colors and what do I do cast on a spring green and pink and purple <laughs> shawl. oh there's some gray in there it'll be fine this is what I wear and this is what I like and these colors are like my spirit animal so it is what it is right I just can't stop it's so squishy it's so squishy you see how stretchy it is and like it's just so great. I'm in love with it. So brioche explosion. This will be a very long-term project. Although I did this in like less than 24 hours or barely over 24 hours. I have no idea how many yards it is. But I guess what I could do is weigh this and then double it. I'm just enjoying it, that's all I know. And I have a pile of other yarns, mostly pink and purple, of course, um, that are gonna be knit into this little bad boy. And everything except for these skeins that I got from Spinner Around are as leftovers, which is also exciting. And I think I have maybe one skein um, of some kind of speckledy yarn that I may put in that is a full skein. But everything else is leftovers, which is awesome. So that is a work in progress. Um, I am really getting excited about Socktober, which is, um, you know, lots of people have Socktober knit alongs, and I am specifically talking about the Socktober um, cowl that is in the. Carolina Fiber Girls podcast group. And so I sort of did a search, a reevaluation, whatever you want to call it, of my sock whips. And I have a lot. <laughs> so I've started pulling them out to work on them and get them to the point where um, where that then I can, you know, kind of leave them to the side and finish up all these pairs of socks in October and win all the prizes. Because <laughs> at least for these few days, that's what I'm motivated to do. Um, so the first thing that I pulled out last week is these, I don't know why I just put this in the thing, but these are some mustache yarn in I don't have a label for this. I think she gave it to me without a label because um, it was a gift <laughs> for my birthday from Stacy. But these are mustache yarn. I think it's fresh, farm fresh eggs or fresh eggs or farm eggs or something like that. Um, but it's just a, the most beautiful pastel stripey colorway. Um, I love this. I am 
as you can see, knitting these on deep ends. And I'm actually knitting both socks at the same time. Um, this is my first time to ever knit socks in tandem. And it's going well so far. So what I have, have done is I have two, oh, and these are in a um, Studio in the Green bag, which is perfect for knitting socks in tandem and many other things, but specifically this because I have each of my little half skeins on a side. And then she's got the little dividers that I can run the yarn through. So I am, I think this leg is going to be done. You can see they're almost in the exact same spots. Basically, I've just been doing like one stripe on one, one stripe on the other. And this one is to the point where I'm going to put in the heel. And I have this yarn in my stash. It's just a big box store yarn. Deborah Norville. Good old Debbie. I'm going to put in a gray, a gray heel there. So it's not the exact same color gray, but it'll work. And Debbie is some good, soft, hardworking yarn. So this will be a heel, and I think I think I'm gonna end up just doing an afterthought heel, probably. And probably what I will do is keep knitting several more stripes and then go back in with a um what am I trying to say? Go back in with a circular needle while I, you know, have this going and just knit my after that heel on here and then um, and kind of do that on both and then I can just get down to the toes and that way I can keep them on the deep ends because I don't really think I want to deal with a fish lips kiss heel or anything like that. So that's at least my working theory for now. But I do know that they will have contrast heel and probably toes, just because I feel like if I'm doing a contrast heel, I should probably coordinate it with a contrast toe. So that is exciting, and I just love that. Isn't that pretty? A green, kind of this brown speckled, a peachy pink. This is, some of them are more pinky, and this one's a little peachier. And then this one is a blue speckled. All different egg colors that you might see. So that is going and going well. The rules for Socktober are that you can have, it can be a whip. You have to at least leave like a afterthought heel, a cuff, or a toe left. So I can knit, I can knit the heels, I can knit all of the foots, I can knit the toe on one, and as long as I only have the toe left on one sock, then I'm totally legal and all I would have to do come October 1st is knit that toe and then I can count the whole pair. So I'm front loading myself, baby. <laughs> you just wait, you look, look at all these whips I got that I'm front loading. Um, okay, so the next whip, socks, blueberry waffle socks. Um, if you remember, I, have these um, socks that I started a while back. I don't remember when, maybe February ish. Um, these are blueberry waffle socks. I have done one. And the second one is, I'll put it on the blocker just because it's easier to see. The second one, I picked it up yesterday. I brought this to baseball for my baseball knitting yesterday. And the second one was just maybe to write there, like just one or two repeats in. And I did the whole foot and the fish lips kiss, kiss heel. So I'm going swimmingly on these. So all I have to do to be legal is knit the leg, stop before I get to the cuff, and then I can enter this in the knit along. Um, this yarn, and I think I do have the, here it is in the cake, it's so super pretty. I think I do have the, 
wrapper for this one. Yes, this is Oloops in the Titania colorway. And this is on their 8020, um, this was Gold Sock. I think now it's called Ascot Sock um, in their shop. But it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams. And um, this was a gift from them last year, um, kind of a gift swap thing that we did. And I just, I love it. I'm so stinking excited to have these socks. And I love the little stripey, how it's striping up. I love it. So that's going well. Um, hopefully by the next time you see these, they will be ready for putting in hibernation to wait for Socktober. All right, so that is another thing I've been working on. And the last, at least, sock whip is another thing that had one sock done. Um, so these are my Pi May socks. Um, this, I actually blocked this this week because they were a little snug and that's just by nature of this pattern with all the biasing. Um, but this was a pattern that was part of the Cookie A Sock Club last year. Yeah, last year was the year that I was in the club. And this is not the club yarn. <laughs> this was some yarn that I had that I thought would, um, really show off these, um, designs nicely. It's kind of monkey-esque ish but not if that makes any sense. Um, the yarn is two if by hand in the Effie colorway and unfortunately they are no longer dying so if you have any two if by hand it is a collector's item <laughs> um, because they are they are done. Um, so the first one was done and the it, it was done like last year. I started these last September. So this will be great to really, or maybe I started them October 1st. So it'll be great to get these off the needles. Um, but I started the second sock. And let me get this on here. I am actually using my, um, my Knit Pro Zings to knit these. I'm just going to put this up here because it's just easier to kind of show off where I am. But and this is not oriented correctly, but whatever. You'll get the idea. So I'm about a repeat and a half in on the leg, I think. Or a little over one repeat. So um, this obviously takes a little bit longer and a little more concentration than a plain vanilla sock. But it is super fun and addicting when you get it going because there's like a patterned row and it's not a rest row the next round, but it's very intuitive as to what you're going to do. So it's almost like a rest row because you don't necessarily have to look at the pattern because you're just reading your stitches. That's the best I can tell you without giving away the thing. But I just love this yarn. It's every color under the rainbow on Sparkle, which is exactly Effie. It's exactly her. So, super great. And I'm hoping my gauge is the same. Um, should be close. So, so that is another sock and I will get this to the toe and then be done, which that'll be super great because um, as you can see from this first one, you actually, so let me take this off of here so I can explain it a little easier. The way that the top of this sock, the top of the toe is done, you actually um, it kind of slants over. This is the left sock. 
and it slants over and you, so you're knitting a ton and obviously you're just knitting on the bottom of the foot, not purling. And so the toe is even faster, the foot is even faster than a normal foot for a pattern sock because you are getting, every row is less and less pattern, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, and then you go from here, there's, you know, at least an inch and a half or so that was just straight knitting before the toe. So that's gonna go super, super quick, which will be great. And this is riding around, which just seems like perfect, happy, perfect, happy little karma. <laughs> this is in a little My Little Turtle bag made by Kristen, who always helps out or helped out the ladies of 2F by Hand in their booth. And it's in this cute little bag that she made that I, either we traded or I bought from her, I can't remember, but super cute and it's the perfect little sock size bag I don't know I think she maybe has an Etsy shop but I don't know but it's my little turtle and the last work in progress that I worked on is in my um, suburban stitcher 10 anniversary bag which this size is sold out so I think there's maybe one or two of the sock bags left and then once those are sold out that's it so all of and same with the whip Things. Once all this stuff is sold out, none of this will be made like with this fabric combination again. Um, but this is my three color cashmere shawl. Um, last week um, I mentioned that I was not sure about the color combination and it is very different for me, but the more and more I knit on it, the more I like it. So I am finished with this first section of kind of larger stripes. And these colors are so similar, you can't really tell, but I'm into the narrower stripes. So I think I've done two repeats of that out of the 10. Um, I'm debating whether or not to add in a stripe of my purple here soon or just wait until I get to the big section of purple. Um, I can't decide. So that's, I haven't worked on this in maybe about a week. Um, I worked on it kind of right after the last episode, thinking I would get it done for Camp Loopy, but it's just not going to get done. So I did two out of three. That's the best I've ever done with Camp Loopy is two out of three projects getting that done. So I'm feeling really good about that, but this one's just not going to get done. Um, and that's going to have to be okay, but it'll get done eventually and I will love it. Um, it'll be fun to work on maybe this fall because it is LSU colors. And so I can have my bright yellow and purple shawl and I can work on that while I'm cheering on the tigers this fall. So that is it for works in progress. I do have some Hello Lovelies this week. Um, I purchased a skein of Spun Right Round. This is one of her Halloween colorways, her sock yarn. Um, and the colorway is called Ghoulie. Like a ghost, Ghoulie. But I just loved this one with the orange, with that purpley, kind of got pink in some places, I'm assuming, where the orange and the purple mixed. And then this scummy green and black. So this will make some super fun, super fun socks. Um, I picked that up. I had a lovely, beautiful, will not name them, um, yarn mule who was so sweet and remembered that I have just been lusting after this one particular yarn for so long and finally got it. Um, cannot tell you how excited I am like I have literally wanted this yarn this colorway easily for a couple of years <laughs> I'm just so excited but I got white birch fiber arts in the sparkle pony colorway so this is going to be thick stripes of this pretty um, light pink and then these rainbow stripes so super 
duper excited. Sparkle Pony. Yay! So thank you, lovely Yarn Mule. <laughs> um, so that is really it for Hello Lovelies. I do want to show, and I can't remember if I showed this before, and if I haven't, I'm the worst. And Xena, I truly apologize, but this summer has just sort of kind of been nutso. Um, one of our sponsors for the Around Your Neck Cow is the lovely and amazing Xena of Little Yellow Uke. She has a podcast and an Instagram by the same name, and she is dying yarn. She donated a skein of yarn to the Around Your Neck Cow, and she sent me a skein of yarn. And the most beautiful note, and I believe this is it, um, yes, she said um, that the colors for this were inspired by me, so she thought that I would like a skein of my own. It's called Pinkle, because it's purple and pink. So pink and purple, Pinkle. And if there was ever a Diane skein, this is it. Um, let's see. It's a good shawl skein as it has a um, 500 meters of squishy merino. And boy, is she right. It is so squishy. I don't know if you can tell by those plies. <laughs> There's always going to be little fabric snippets in this room. It is so right there. You can see how squishy that is. It's just like, oh my gosh, it almost doesn't feel like merino. It has that like, um, you know how Rambouillet is like super, super squishy and bouncy? Kind of has that feel almost. It's amazing. Um, and she sent along, of course, it's tied with a yellow ribbon. And she sent me a little stitch marker that says made with love. So, Zena, thank you so much. I absolutely love it. Um, I have actually pulled this out again recently, which made me think, I don't know that I've showed this on the podcast. Um, but I pulled this out specifically, number one, because some of it's going to go on my blanket. And number two, because I'm thinking about like a hitchhiker or something, like a, or a trillion one of those Martina Bame, just knit until you're all the way done patterns. Um, I don't know, something like that, but it's just amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. I love it. And you definitely need to go check out her shop, Little Yellow Uke Crafts. Um, she is on Etsy. So that is it for Hello Lovelies. Next week, I actually... Um, I'm going to be talking about another yarn that I was given a sample of and one to give away. Not as part as of the um, Around Your Neck Cal, and which is kind of why I've been waiting because all of these prizes and things are Around Your Neck Cal, but there's going to be um, some yarn that I'm giving away um, very soon after that. So, so I think that's it for Hello Lovelies. The last thing that I want to talk about are some shop update things. Um, I have last week was putting in um, kind of the beginnings of some fall and Halloween bags. Um, there are still a couple left, um, specifically these cute, and there's only two of them. So make sure that if you like this, and this is it, like I went, so many people loved this fabric, and I went and tried to find some more, and I couldn't find it. This is, I picked this up last year on sale kind of either right before Halloween or right after um, at one of my local um, quilt stores for fabric and I can't find it if if y'all know what this fabric is let me know help point me in a direction of where I can get some more of this but it's gone um, so if you like it these kind of damask jack-o-lanterns with bats and spiders and just super cute um, these are my little notions bags and the lining is kind of a black and gray chevron. So there are two of those. There are some zippered bags. I think, like I said, there are a couple of the anniversary bags left. That's it. There are some football drawstring bags. There are some, I think there's still a skeleton riding the bicycle. What did I call that one? 
steampunk skeleton. I think there's still one of those. Um, the other exciting thing is this week I'll be having a special update on September 1st at 2 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Um, and I'm going to show you a preview right now. I've only made up a couple of the samples, uh, but this is what it's going to be. Um, this update is special for the Socktober um, in the Carolina Fib Fiber Girls group. And I am a sponsor, and so if you use any of my products, then you get more points. And I think you also get extra points for it being a Socktober exclusive item. Double check the rules, but I'm almost positive. So I have made up a couple of samples because I want to show you, but I am using these awesome linens, which I just love sewing with linen right now. So can you see the texture on there? It is 100% linen. And these are the Notions bags, so there will be a handful in each color. Um, but as I've said before, oh, and here's the lining. Oh my gosh. So I have orange. They both have an orange zipper, but I have orange and then I have this like limey, this, this is showing up very apple. It's really, it's a little more Halloween-y, grungy green than that. It's not quite as apple-y green as it's showing up. But the lining is this awesome batik with, or with all the same oranges and greens and then also has some pinky purples. So it was just very Halloween and fall looking to me. And their logo is orange and green and purple. So that's the lining. It's batik, and then the outside is the linen. As I have mentioned before, these are seriously perfect for um, anything, notions for sure, but also for, I mean, they're big enough to put glasses in, they will hold feminine products, phones, all that kind of stuff. I'm super excited about this. Um, every time I put these in the shop, they sell out very quickly. So if you are at all interested in um, a Notions pouch, like I said, there's only going to be a handful in these linens and, um, and they go quick. So there will be these also same fabric, same combinations in my sock sized. So just picture it about that size, <laughs> not striped. Um, that's coming in just a couple of days, September 1st um, at 2 o'clock Central. And if you get them, then you earn extra points for Socktober. Um, I will also be doing a trunk show um, coming up in October. I will be at the Sated Sheep, which is in... I want to say Marble Falls or Johnson City or something like that, Texas, um, but it's part of the Hill Country Yarn Crawl, the Sated Sheep, S-A-T-E-D. Um, I will have lots of bags of different sizes. I'll have some Halloween and fall fabrics. I'll have some just fun fabrics. I will have um, some of the plain, you know, linen products if you're not into printed, you know, typed themed bags. Um, and I'm hoping to have a couple of new product debuts there as well. So um, that is October. It's the weekend of like the 7th through the 9th. It's before Columbus weekend, I think. If you look at the date. Um, October 8th. It's the Saturday that I will be there. Um, they open at 10. And I'm probably going to be there, you know, until about 2 or 3. So 10 to 2 or 3. Um, I really hope to see you there. So I think that's it for this week. Thank you all so much as always. Um, thank you for an amazing 100 episodes for three years here of podcasting. And I will see you next time. Bye guys.